Here. Uh, at that meeting, 
uh, a Dr. Orlich from the University of Pittsburgh was there, and he has assigned like, apparently five of his staff, or so five of his students, to do a, a, a study of the watershed area that's causing the flooding of Bridgeville, so that some uh, fundamental uh, mathematical perspective can to decide how wide and how deep the uh, uh, creek bed should be through the Baldwin Street area or the entire. Correct me if I'm wrong, that wasn't the data by the bird and any. No, no, the that army. That was just something that Mr. Euler is He's doing having it doing just to do for himself. Right, yes. you're seeing your project. That's their okay. project, yeah. The Army Corps is actually modeling right. um, the, the problem areas in the borough. Okay. Excuse me, Bob. No, that's, that's okay. Yeah, I, for, 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 I just want to, is the Army Corps, are they doing like just about the same thing the University of Pittsburgh? Yes. So, that's wonderful. Uh, I'll give you hopefully two independent sources of information. Uh, <laughs> it's, not you, yeah, it's not the University of Pittsburgh, it's the student, it's the senior project. So oh, we know, oh, you know, just to be clear. We, 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 it was the, the professor's assignment to the, right. to the group of kids today. Hey, it was a student's choice. It's a lot of, uh, choice. A lot of free hours from a lot of great kids. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to point out about this, excuse me, the thing that I, that I object to about the uh, plan that's been proposed in a two year mass, it essentially requires all of Baldwin Street, uh, at least from a media perspective, to be used as a flood plan. There wasn't much of a even perspective in the plan that's been proposed by Carol Yander. Uh, there seems to be not much attention placed on watershed capacity, and there seems to be no uh, focus or emphasis on the wider width and the deeper depth of the creek bed, whether it should be uh, confined in two high walls, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm, I'm about to we, we, we've talked about this too. We said when we get to that phase, Good. we would bring in hydrologists to, to look and see what that, the plan is just a, is, yeah, that's just the architectural drawing. Okay. The actual, what the water's doing, that's gonna be uh, no, 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 that, that's, I understand that, but I just want, I just want to point out again, yeah. That this is, I think I showed you, I showed you this before. Yes, we see it, yes. What I, what I wanted to show you and the others here, that this is the Young Lakers plan. Excuse me. And even though eventually uh, the width and depth of the creek bed and how it's to be confined and so on will be uh, determined by you guys. But right now, the concept of our plan, as you know, is. To eliminate Byron Road from the cement county to the Washington Road intersection uh, and use the entire area between Byron Road and Baldwin Street as a huge floodplain area and uh, eliminating all those buildings on the north side of Baldwin Street, but also the buildings on the south side of Baldwin Street. At the meeting uh, the other night, the planning commission meeting, I wanted to make it clear because I was really uncertain. Whether the buildings on the on the south side of Baldwin Street were to be placed on ten foot high vertical columns so that the water could even flood into that, and she uh, admitted that that was part of the plan. I want to point out to you, I object to that general concept, no matter what. Well, and, and I want to explain why. <coughs> Excuse me. The uh, uh, Baldwin Street is probably the largest. Uh, area of flat ground in the community that could be transformed into another business district that could be far more successful than the central business district because it's level. You have a 10,000 car a day power of a road running alongside it. And considering the percentage, the high percentage of tax revenues that are being paid by the people in the community, the moderate, the moderate to low income, of the average family bridge, which is fifty or fifty-five thousand dollars a year, I think she place more emphasis on uh, putting the floodplain, and I mentioned this to you before, on this twenty-acre area that's eight hundred yards north of Bridgeville, and don't make the Bob, area Bob, Bridgeville. I, I appreciate that. 
that, that is not in our, that is not in Bridgeville. We have to do, we have to look and see what we can do in Bridgeville. I don't have, we don't have jurisdiction over that 20 acres. No, no, that's, that's not ours. ours. No, no, and no. we can't control what happens on that upstream. I know. So no, we I, have to do what we can do here. But I object to you, I object to you, you guys even considering uh, allowing the Baldwin Street area to get wiped out and use this floodplain, plain it's when it's much more valuable than that. We but but the but presented to us yet. Yeah, we haven't well, but we have this, they haven't presented this yet to us. So you're you're speaking on I I, I get what you're well she well she's described this to you. Right, I know. Yeah. You'll have a chance to comment on this when it comes to the It hasn't come so, it hasn't, it hasn't, it hasn't, it hasn't come up for a vote yet, we're still Okay, look, all right. It's not more productive for them to be able to take your comments in the context of them having the plan to review. That, that's fine. Tell me something. Uh, do you, do any of you feel um, not quite content with the fact that the buildings on the south side of the street have to be raised? Oh, we, we, haven't, we haven't got that point yet. Okay. Okay. Well, that's what I was trying to say is they haven't got the plan to review. You're asking them to comment on things that they don't have yet. Well, true, but they've been described. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if you would describe it. might be more productive if you had a conversation with them while they were actually reviewing the plan or at least to make comments. No, that's fine. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Council recognizes yes. Mary Weiss, please. We're not going to stand here. Very <coughs> short. Very yeah. short. I still want you people, please, to try to get PennDOT to acknowledge that they need Upper St. Clair, they need all the way across a two or four lane highway, we take them right to 519, right to I-79, and eventually to 43. I ask you, please ask them to seriously consider. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council recognizes uh, Ray Aaron Holtz. <coughs> Just wanted to follow up with the traffic concerns between uh, on Winfield and Bank Street. I understand there was some difficulty. I guess an email to Mr. Anderson. Difficulty receiving it. Uh, Joe mentioned that. So in uh, Joe's intervention, we ordered the <coughs> plan and listed basically the recommendations. We talked about that traffic solution. And just want to note that this morning, we got the kids on the bus. The gentleman behind the school bus was blowing the horn. Apparently, he felt these kids going to the intermediate school couldn't get on the bus and park them. So, you think you see it all. So, that happens. There's no one for anywhere to go. This gentleman started blowing the horn behind the school bus. Had a choice work with him. Too bad the window was up. We could have carried on the conversation a little further, but that's just the way human nature is. So, that's. Mike, can, can I uh, make a comment? Yeah, sure. So, so we, uh, we did take this in the committee and, and discussed it. And looked at your uh, the points that you and the neighbors raised up there. One of the things that we in the community are going to recommend is that we erect uh, two temporary stop signs uh, <laughs> both, in both directions at Lafayette uh, on Winfield there. And um, we want to see if that's going to interfere with traffic on Chartiers or Bank. So I think it's best to do it as a temporary, just to evaluate what it creates. About doing so. so that's the first step we're going to take. Uh, we're still considering some of the other suggestions that they made. Top of the chief, he's not here this evening, but we're going to uh, continue to work with you guys. It's a process, and if I get any assistance from neighbors, we'd be glad to be assisted with that. Work with you on that process. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other motion? No, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to talk about the flood packages. Yeah. You know me, I say it like it is. I guess you do. <laughs> you guys, you know, it's just a terrible situation. But I thought the response to that flood was amazing. I get around a lot of towns. I don't know how you could do it, not any better. You know, I mean, as far as rescuing the dogs, I mean, the people, uh, the, the people trying to cut through there and getting tickets, you know, the uh, tired people, you know, money trying to walk across the street, keeping everybody safe, uh, the dumpsters, the borough cleaning up. I, I don't know how you could have done that any better. I, I was so impressed. And I worked around a lot of people, and I don't know anybody in, in the building trades or the heavy house trades, if you would have got a contractor that could have done that any better than uh, uh, Lori Collins and the rest of you guys did. I mean, that was amazing. I 
I know. Yeah. That's the only reason I come down here. Yeah. Thank you, Norm. Yeah, it's true. You, you know, that was, that was one of your finest hours. You guys got it on that. You Thank know. you very much. I, I mean, it's a shame it wasn't fly, but the response was incredible. Craig Valentino. Thank you, Norm. I'd just like to uh, second what Bob said about uh, allowing John Taylor and his uh, engineering students uh, to study the curriculum in time. It may be redundant uh, exactly. for the Army Board of Engineers, but I really think that that's uh, something that you should consider. Oh, please. Okay, and I'm, and I'm, okay, I'm, I'm still not sure exactly where in this whole process the recommendation of the Planning Commission and where you come in, I'm not sure that whole the whole time frame. Well, what exactly happened? So the, the planning commission recommended this plan to you? The planning commission recommend the plan to them. They'll be provided with a plan to review. They'll have time to review the plan and when they're when they're ready they will make um, a motion either to move forward with the plan or reject the plan. Council will make yes. that motion. The planning commission only is a recommend a recommending body. They do not right. make legislation. So the council can say they don't like the plan and and we'll reject it. it. Okay. Um, send it back and tell them we like this part, but we don't like that part. Okay. Or um, say we don't like it at all. Or they can say yes, we like it and we want to move forward with it. So now they'll be provided with a plan and they'll review it and when they're ready to make some kind of, um, uh, take some type of action on it, it will be it will come before the board. Okay. I'm also going to recommend that um, this, if this is the plan or semblance of the plan, please advertise this to the community because I've talked to at least 10 people who know nothing about this plan. And I don't know when you uh, contracted with Carol to start this plan. How long has this plan been? A year and a half, year and a half. at least, and it's been, um, it's been uh, every planning commission meeting and everyone is advertising. So. Well, I'm going to ask Carol to get her plan and then we'll have a Well, you know, I'm not saying that the uh, papers aren't doing the job here, but I mean, I, I just know that the people I talk to just don't know anything about this. And it's been called, I mean, just appreciate it, just so folks know, it's been called so-and-so's plan, their plan, this company's plan. They are a, they're a consultant company that's hired to actually work with the planning commission and the borough. That's actually, and they actually got, it's an interactive process. The, the planning commission actually can help you design that plan. You know, somebody just didn't get hired, go out, come back and say, boom, okay? They actually had different options, scenarios, I think they talked about over time. The pros pretty many or more different scenarios and options that were discussed in open public meetings back and forth, report back to council, just still finding over time into this currently recommended. Okay, is there, is there a time frame um, for uh, for the council to get? There's no mandatory. It's not mandatory. No, so, time, but, I mean, I'm sure it'll be yeah, before the, uh, the next month or the next meeting. The next meeting, yeah. Okay. Excuse me, Mike. Uh, the, the University of Pittsburgh people said that their study would be done first of the center, I think. Is that correct? So, that's easy. That, that's what I. That's what I guess I'm getting it. I would like. I would like. To, I would like to uh, join Oliver and his group to at least study this problem and have, have adequate time to get back to you. And I don't know where you're going. Correct me if I'm wrong. We did not commission them. No, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just think that's a valuable tool. It's a valuable sure. resource. Oh, it's more information, but that. we have not done any agreement or anything with them to do it. They just volunteered that they want to do a study. Right. And please, I think we're mischaracterizing. What I think I'm understanding is going on is that a student in that field of study has chosen to choose this as his assignment to get credit for something that he has to turn in this December to get a grade on for his major. 
at Pitt. It's not a Pitt study, it's not the professor's study, it's a student that may be quite valuable. And that data, yes, would be accepted and useful, and actually maybe could be shared with the um, core and folks who, Lori, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, they are, as a result of your meetings and everything, they're actually going to be doing a main, you know, a. The Army Corps is doing, and is doing right now, a, a, a study in modeling all of our problem areas all the way along the Rockland Run. So if anything is going to be valuable to us, it's going to be when they are done with their the modeling of the Rockland Run. So. I just, my point was, is that what happens if the Army Corps and the college students have two totally different views? The college student that is a college student or the Army Corps who is the professional entity that does these things for a living. And let me, That's just my point. And let me add on to what you're saying, Joe, is you know, the Army Corps of Engineers have much greater resources to do the necessary study of the watershed for to come up with something, whereas the college students are going to have very limited resources of what they're of how they're going to model this watershed. Yeah, I'm not trying to demolish no, anything they're doing. I'm not even it's an assignment. It's an education. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be gospel what they said. Right. I mean, I did a high school, did a senior project there myself, and it was an at grade railroad crossing. We had to go out and do all of our own research for the project and come up with a solution to the problem and do cost benefit analysis, just like the Army Corps of Engineers would. <coughs> And all this, by the way, also at least we've got, you know, grant money funding and all that, and that as far as Joe and Lori can make help. Certain studies to be of a nature, and you need to see so about that have, study, this I, back, and to get your money that helps you do whatever the project is. I, I just don't want you to dismiss it, that's all. Absolutely not. Let me, uh, let me, uh, if, if I may, Mr. Chief. Yes, sir. Let me go back on the student from uh, university under... Uh, Mr. Rowley, okay. When I was president of the Chair Library, uh, Mr. Rowley came in with his student, <coughs> our meeting the same way. So the student, after a month or so, they come in with a project to build a bridge from the parking lot to the library, which we thought of that. But just to say, just to enter something very important that Joe said, but the government, the agency government, they know a lot more than just that. They designed the bridge that never thought of the railroad, which to deal with the railroad, and that's not just like that. They, they thought there was nothing there. So, he's right. They do the study, they come in, it's an educational thing. That bridge was costing more than the library. And we said to this student, did you ever talk about to check with the railroad? No, we never did. I've got this very important. It's going to go to the railroad. This might be going to be some similar to that. But they open an idea to the student. Mm -hmm. and they were going to check more things when we do this assignments. You know what I mean, yes. Freddy? Yes. You've been a teacher. Yes. Many times uh, you took your, your student somewhere for <coughs> whatever. <coughs> you know. Yeah. Well, it's good. It's, it's costing the borough nothing. Right, exactly. And, 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 and we yeah. couldn't accept the number one. If we would accept that, the library. We would have to do so many other study around that. And this might happen the same thing. I'm sure they will happen the same thing. There'll be so many, oh my God, so many things that they're going to incorporate. They might find something in it that they, you can sit there and say, hey, do you think about this? Yeah, well, it, that's it, what I'm it, it could be. And, okay. and he's yeah. going to, I talked to him, he's going to send it to me. Um, I told him if he has any questions, I gave him my email address. And I told him that we would be glad to, you know, to, to take it. So when he's done, he's going to send it to me. I'm going to pass it on to the engineers and to council. So you know, we're not going to just you know shut okay. this up. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, I, I, um, my my last point is uh, a related topic. 
uh, also at the Planning Commission, Lori um, sits on the Chartres Valley Flood Control. Yes. Okay, and I would like uh, maybe Council to uh, send a letter to Collier asking Collier to work with us and the North End Bridge tributary or you know, whatever you want to call that channel uh, to clean that. Yeah, the back channel. channel. The back channel, yeah. And Fred, I think we, 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 we had an executive meeting here probably about three weeks ago. We, the Flood Control Authority uh, Executive Board told me, which since I'm the engineer for the Flood Control Authority, to proceed with getting the necessary permits to clean out where the confluence of the two channels come together, the big walk okay. over run and uh, Short the bad channel of short trees creek, and I think that's something you and I had talked about going down and visiting and on the wooden yeah. drive to go down there with you. Okay. Okay. I guess the, the question is how far would you go up to, towards the shopping center? Well, I, that's a good that's, question. And, uh, that's what I think. I think I think the biggest thing is clean the, the, the bar, the, the sediment bar that's down there, and I'll show it to you. Is acting as a dam mm -hmm. and it's causing the water to back up both channels. When it rains, and I think the idea is we need to get it down below the water level so that they can both can unwind. Okay, so okay. call your original really me uh, together might, might help the situation a little bit. But uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank thank you. I would like to make a comment about the planning commission, Fred. If you don't mind, and Mr. Chairman, I hope you don't mind. If I'm out of water, you can tell me I don't mind telling drinking the gallon. Now the 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 plan that this firm give us, Fred, that's about a year and a half to close to two years. We worked very hard. Most of those meeting council came as you guys, just like they know, and they make a comment as well. Bob made a comment. Many other people made a comment, and they would be an advertised everywhere. We, planning commission, they, they, the firm, applied a lot of this comment in, in a proper way. They did. The, uh, they made more room, if you recall, they moved the, uh, the road of Barrio a little over because they want more green over there. So we, we and the, uh, the, the firm accepted those from the public and incorporated with this plan that we recommended to council. Okay. There was there was so many meetings that we have that public should know about it. Now what we should do, I mean it was on the paper all the time. They all advertise on the paper. Uh, I don't know what else is if we have to uh, send an invitation to each on Facebook and on Facebook. Facebook. And on what else we gotta do? On, on calendar on, on you know, I've been in Kansas so many years. Some sometime in this 33 years, we had so many important meetings that we got so many chairs in the hall here. See, people want to know this. This hall is gonna be full. We are two people. What we gotta do? I don't know what we're going to do. We would like to see the people coming in. Now, I do not accept a genetic plan. If a Bobby Fry wants to do genetic plan, he's been doing for, for 50 years. And he's an intelligent guy on this thing. He could have went to school. He could have been incredible. Have a, have a firm or work with the firm. He could put a stamp over there. And we can very well take more consideration on that. But the public, it's very important to us. Doesn't mean maybe the council don't want to talk to some of that. We work on professional people to recommend us, whatever may be the test that we give of that. To me, those are genetic. There is no architectural signature there. There's no architectural diploma there. To me, that's acknowledgement of a person that we all have some education in the street, to be street wise. That's a generic to me. 
I don't care. You call whatever you want. That's genetic medicine and the real medicine. Okay? It's a nurse and a doctor. I'm sorry, Bob. You have it in your mind, but your planning 50 years hasn't been accepted because they are generic. Sister, but the belief for it, too. Nina. No, I don't care what you say. Just a second. Okay. My, my concepts, my drawings, exhibit common sense that would be acknowledged by anybody in this community, by the way. The point I'm trying to make again is, apparently you guys never informed the young lady, uh, Carol Daniel, who did this plan, of Bridgeville's financial condition. We're paying enormous taxes. The public facilities we have here don't even compare to any communities around us. That's what I'm talking about. You guys are considering in this plan of wiping out I, I think, I think the, 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 the chairman the gave me the idea of thinking oh. about Bridgeville. You know. we, we can't compete with our neighbors. You were saying, you were we saying this, this community could have, we can and still be extremely wealthy, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. 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 It's going to go on and on. Yeah. 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 Bob, you don't look the old picture, Bob. To build a sum at $40 a square foot, and get $10 rent to pay, no one do. Okay, I'm sorry. About it. No one understands what you just said. That's still generic. What does that mean? No. Okay, thank you. On to the regular meeting. Motion to borrow accounts regarding the minutes of September 10, 2018. Regular meeting as submitted. I'll second. Bruce and Bill. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Resolution number 2018-11, motion to borough council regarding resolution number 2018-11, resolution confirming that the borough original is formally requesting a grant from the Allegheny County Department of Economic Development in the amount of $40,000 for ADA upgrades to the Blockman Park restroom facilities.
been spending months in addition to that. That's all. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, thanks. I got a few things here. I uh, got a call this morning from the Public Works Department about Cartier's Park. I hit again with the vandals and they put some graffiti on the, uh, the plastic playground by shelter number two. So that's so whatnot. Then this Joe Gucci reported me that probably at the same time they got into the uh, Nazi booth on the big field and threw stuff out into the field and whatnot. Uh, years ago we tried to get cameras and it got stopped. We were in the process of doing it this year before we sort of cut us off on that because we, we didn't know what our finances are going to be. But hopefully someday we'll get cameras and Try to catch these guys sooner. I mean, it's ongoing. I'm sure, it's kids, but it just upsets me so know. much. And that playground we're putting down there, it's not a new one. That got to put in there 15, 20 years ago. It's still holding up, it's functional. But people keep messing with it, but it's not going to last forever. So, so much for that. Uh, the newsletter deadline is today, so if you've got anything, get it in the bar or down. Uh, also, on a happier note, the Halloween Parade, October 27th. Kids will line up at the Goodwill Manor at 10 a.m. and they'll parade down to the fire hall. If it rains, all activities will take place at the fire hall. If it's a rain or shine event, we just don't march if it rains. Uh, members of council here, sure I'm sure been telling you, we have the uh, COG meeting here in Bridgeville at the fire hall. X30, X30. So uh, they moved the time up to 6:30 now. So hopefully that can all show up. And that's all I have. Thanks, Joe. Make it, Fred. It's one was about in the you've been you've been here. What I'm at the call is a lot of information for the municipality. We learn from that. Please make it. You have a lunch. You live in here. We talked to other municipality. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, I thought that was going to give you the public work. Oh, yeah. I was going to give Well, the, the whole work of public work, it's, it's a normal work. But it's one thing here, it's very important. Built wall behind the beer distributor. If you notice, it is a big wall that's being built over there. This can stop a lot of water coming in. It can save, can save a foot or two or three of the water coming in. Also now, Lori, the engineer, is working on other things for us to get into the creek so we can, there was an entrance and exit for us to clean that. Not anymore. It is a wall there. Pretty high. So that's big help. I would like to build their wall all the way to the to the stream on this side. That would be nice. But just to show you, we council working on the front. More than ever, every year it's more and more same as a fort and front, etc. You know, it's we work on every day on front. That wall is absolutely good idea. Take a look, you saw it? I am watching. Please do. I would like to see it all the way up to certain. That's all I have. And the rest is normal, normal work that probably wouldn't have. Thank you. Yes, sir. Question. I got that call this morning about the band that was on there. It was like, I was on the other side of town working. By the time I got back from the bridge for about 3 o'clock, I got down there. <laughs> I don't want to come in to public works. I think it was a little chilly. I'm chuckling down and took care of all that time. And he did a fine job. Hopefully, I don't think anybody saw it. So, I just want to come in to public works with those two gentlemen. That's all. Thank you. Uh, public safety, Bill Anderson. Mike, I just want to expand on that uh, recommendation made earlier. I don't know if I need a motion to. Um, the temporary, the temporary stop signs. She has something. Yes. She okay. So I'd like to make a motion to uh, erect two temporary stop signs at Loft, or not, yeah, Lafayette on Winfield. 
and uh, in each direction, and we will monitor the traffic that that creates and, and work from there. Okay. So, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Okay. That's all I have. Yeah. Uh, Madam Mayor. I'm sure all of you are aware that the donut boy was here for the police department, and police departments from all around were present. They presented him with patches and other things. I'm grateful to the fire department for the shirts that they gave to him. The Historical Society also gave him a shirt, and the library presented him with a journal, a cash donation for his, his foundation. And they are going to have one night where people are going to come and make cards. He also requests that they make cards, thank you cards, that he can then present when he makes his trip to other states and gives out the donuts and the thank you cards. He also had a wonderful time with a car that Officer Spencer had given a little yellow car and once everyone had left the building, he was on the floor and all around the tables playing with the car, car. So that was big excitement for him. Uh, October 20th is the last in the series of topics at the Methodist Church on listening for the future. And the topic at night will, at 7 o'clock will be we're all in this together. October 31st, I declare as official trick-or-treat day evening in the borough from 6 to 8. We ask all of our drivers and all surrounding communities to be aware of the children. We need them to be protected, and our police officers will be also out handing out the little memento for the Halloween season. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Sergeant James, do you have anything? No. Good. Just one check. Thanks. Um, Bob, you have anything? You didn't know. You have my written report. Engineer uh, Sykes. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I apologize for the delay getting to the report from the day, but I just want to highlight a couple things here. Uh, we had a good meeting uh, with the uh, walk around the communities uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, yourself and uh, Bruce were there. I think it was a very healthy discussion to talk about things uh, related to the watershed and flood uh, related projects. Uh, the CD44 Chartier's Park 88 restroom renovations. I talked with select contracting this morning. He's in the process of getting uh, his submittals pulled together uh, and getting them over to me to get the approvals. Uh, he has to go to the Allegheny County Department of Economic Development for their pre construction meeting, then we can have our meeting. Uh, Payment maintenance. I talked with Young Board last week. They are substantially completed with a punch list. There's a couple items that need to be. Uh, completed, and I was going to take a ride through town this week and verify that they were done. Uh, Baldwin Street, there's uh, there's been uh, progress with the uh, start of the work by Osiris Enterprises, and uh, what this has done is people see them out there working, and they're calling Lori and saying, "How about me?" So we're getting some uh, some activity. And I said, I sent you an agreement. You did? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Joe, good report. The Joe. question was asked uh, with the, uh, the pre construction meetings down at the parks. Do you need us? No, we don't actually be there. No, I can. I mean, Lori and I can handle that. So. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Fire Chief, we'll show you. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, I'm surprised Joe didn't report on us, but we had the we went up to participate at the Chili Cook Hall. Let's get to that. Yeah. Uh, it was a good time. We had a good time up there. Nice weather. The weather was perfect. Oh my god, yes. I think that was the most I've had a taste in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. But uh, no, everything's been going very well at the fire department, everybody knows. Uh, we still have been very, very busy on calls. I think we went a week without a call when we didn't know what to do. I liked it, but the other guys were going nuts. So, now we've been holding our own and saying that. So, just want to go and then we'll see you right for the Halloween parade. Looking forward to it again. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, Mary, you need to give us a little sign. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, this one won't be quite as short because these are all going to be invitations. 
Um, first of all, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, over at the railroad station, the high school years being discussed are 54 and 55. Um, so you're all welcome to come and see how it works. But Dr. John Oiler is our historian, and he is in charge of that. And we've been doing from, what year did we start? 1903. So we're up to 1954. Calendar wise, on the 18th of this month, the Thursday, and Friday the 19th, we will have a bake sale. And the bake sale will be Thursday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So all you people who work can get there easily. Lunch hour after work. Uh, we would like to see the council represented there and, and all the different departments of the borough. Uh, you do a great job for us, but we need to make some money. Thank you. And last but not least, we have two terrific programs coming up. One is World War II on the home front. And when I was looking at this, it's Dr. P. Pastino who's going to give that talk. Uh, he's the one who sponsors all the veterans' breakfasts. Uh, Washington County, Greene County, Beaver County, Allegheny County, Butler County, he does. Uh, I, the main thing I remember was I needed a pair of shoes <laughs> during World War II, and he had a little ticket to get it. Uh, it took me a long time to get it. Uh, there will be other memories, I'm sure, he'll tell. But incidentally, and I've said this to everyone, during World War II, the Depression before it was the safest era in the history of southwestern Pennsylvania. Very safe. We would go home from work at midnight, go to school the next morning, perfectly safe, no problems. Then to end our programs for this year or two, oh, oh there I go, throwing goodies away, and I walk on there. Um, but the last one is the end of November, and since part of my family came from the war, I can tell you it was a terrible tragedy. Um, that heavy air down on all those smoke things. I, I, I worry about Bridgeville all the time because of everything that we've had around us. But that was really the beginning of the environmental issues in the United States. And I wish you all happy holidays, but I'll be here next month anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad the United States was saved in World War II. I sure as hell I wasn't in Italy at that time. <laughs> you were in Italy at that time. Yes, you did it wasn't like, safe at all. You did not like your school. That's well, right. We were in Mussolini's uniform. Right. Mandatory. Right. Um, Thank you. Virtual library. Right. You know anything? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Yes. So between work on our strategic plan, we can also provide working on providing the borough more detailed information, probably upcoming months as far as income expenses, that type of thing. So more detailed information, attendance on various things that go on within the library. That's why I brought this as well. We start. This is the Shark Tooth Valley Magazine. The virtual library now is going to take a one-page ad on every quarter on basically activities going on in the list of September and October activities here. Just kind of raise the awareness around the community. And we figure it's one of the best and one of the easiest ways to get the information out to the public. It's also in the newsletter too. Okay. So yeah. So that's kind of all I have from the Thank you very much. Sure. Anybody here's an apartment for the community. Uh, Planning Commission, please have a um, Planning Commission today. Yes, we did. Okay. Um, Manager Paul. Um, I've provided my written report. If anyone has any questions, the only thing that I didn't place on here was um, right now we're being audit. We're having a four-year pension audit on the uniform and non-uniform plan. So that usually lasts a week. It started last. Okay. Thank you. Old business. I did have one thing, and Chief Chili had beaten to it. I wanted to thank the public for uh, coming to the Bridgeville Slafayette Rotary Ch 
chili contest. It was a huge success. We had over 600 people there. Um, the Rotary has made some really good money and is looking forward to being able to share that uh, with some of the different uh, programs that we're heavily involved in. So, a uh, very successful event, and thanks to Mike uh, Medlin and Bill for being our judges, two of the three, and uh, it did very well. I was actually surprised uh, how long, for 29 chilies, so. Oh, 26. Uh, well, plus Crafty, craft, I'm sorry, 27, Crafty Jackalow ended up better than oh, wow. one. But you guys didn't, because they were so late, I think maybe you did. We didn't have it. You didn't have it. Yeah, it was a very successful event, and a lot of people from the community of Bridgeville, especially, were there. And it was neat to see. Uh, new business. So Mike, I'd like to ask for an executive session to discuss personal issues. Okay. Uh, we're going to break for an executive session. Um, you're free to stay if you like. Do uh, we'll, you need to take action? I believe we might be. So we, we'll be adjourning after the executive session. I made a motion. Second. Oh, <laughs> you said people. You didn't say who. Hurry up, Joe. We only need four. We only need four. I made a motion. We adjourn. Can you have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Uh, I, I was opposed.